So we're going to launch out the book of James, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. Book of James, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. It says, James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes, which are scattered abroad. Greeting, my brother, count it all a joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work with patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and unbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Let the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy scripture. I want to talk to you just for just a few, few moments under the title, uh, Trials, Tests, and Temptations. Trials, tests, and temptations. And you know, all of us, we have tests and trials and tribulations and temptations in our life. If you keep living, sooner or later, you're going to have to go up against something that's going to test you. James is the author of this book. So we know that by his salutation in the beginning. It says, James, the servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we know that he is the author of this book. James, he's not mentioned in the Gospels, but he did go on later to preside over a church. He is the brother of Jesus, and apparently he was skeptical of Jesus' ministry. Anybody in here have somebody who is skeptical when you try to share with them about your Savior? You trying to let them know what God has done for you? And the hardest people to get through to is your family because they know your past. They know what you used to do. They know, might, might know some of the things you're still wrestling with. Even Jesus had his family members that they didn't necessarily believe in him. But later on, as we say, James kind of got it together and presided over a church. In verse 2, we read that you will have many temptations. All of us are going to be tempted at one point or another. And some of us are going to fall to temptations. But you can fall and get back up and keep on moving on. Now, last, uh, I guess it was maybe a few months ago, we went on out. And, you know, we, all of us fall. Amen, somebody. If you keep living, you're going to make a mistake and you're going to fall. So we went on roller skating, and I had been roller skating in 20-some, maybe 30 years. And when I put those skates on, I said, I'm getting ready to fall. I knew I was getting ready to fall when I, got to, when I put them skates on. But I remember one thing about me, I know how to fall. I know how not to brace myself with my arms. I know how to roll. I know how to fall. You better be, you best believe that you will make mistakes. You're going to fall. Now, the sin that we are engaged in up here in the pulpit, anybody in the pulpit up here make some mistakes? Anybody in here sin a little bit? Anybody got something they wrestle with? So the problems that we have up here in the pulpit, they might not be your problems. Your sin is not my sin, and my sin is not your sin. But you will fall sooner or later. I tell my young people, and the downstairs we're working to get our young people back in church. We're trying the best we can. And it's not just Galilee. It's all over the nation and all over the city. There are people who are struggling to get the young people back because they're used to being at home. They're used to relaxing. I can go on Zoom now. I don't have to be there. You know, I don't have to be in church. You know, I, I, can, I can roll over. I can be a bedside Baptist. I don't have to be in church. But there's something about being in the house of the Lord have companionship and camaraderie with your brothers and sisters. So I tell my young people downstairs, I tell them, look, you will be tempted. You will be tested. And I try to keep it real. I'm saying, don't go in the room. 
Amen, somebody. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Y'all awful quiet. <laughs> I tell my young people, don't go in the room. If you go in that room, he's going to have his expectations, and you're going to have your expectations, and it's going to be a problem. Don't go in the room. And my Bible tells me that uh, Paul says that there's no temptation that is so great that God won't provide a way out. All right, so we have this, this thing about temptations. And in my Bible here, in, in verse 2, it's saying many. That's more than one. That's many. It says divers. That's a, a, a number of temptations that you will encounter. And then in verse 3, it's talking about patience. I think there's a song as it says something like, uh, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. You know, God is still working on me. God is still trying to have his way with me. I'm still developing as a Christian. I might make some mistakes along the way. You know, the, God is someone who will be with you even when you make mistakes. He will help pick you up and help you get back on track. So verse 2 is, is, is talking about temptation. And then in verse 3 is talking about patience. And then in verse four, it's talking, I'm talking verse three is talking about patience. Again, anytime a word is used twice, back to back like that, and it's weaved in there, and you find it in more than one spot in the Bible, you know it's something that's important. It takes patience. It takes time. Now, you know, some of us, we get tested when somebody pulls out in front of us. Huh? Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know, they drive out in front of you, or you late to work. You leave in the house late, and somebody's in front of you, and now you want them to get out the way. So it takes time. It takes uh, effort to develop patience in the Lord. And then in verse 5, it talks about wisdom and how God will give, wis give you wisdom. There's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge comes from reading. Right, right, knowledge comes from study. But wisdom comes from God. You'll find some people who never went to nobody's school. Isn't that bad English right there? But you know what I'm saying. I know my grandfather, if there's one person I like to meet when I get the glory, it would be my grandfather. Because I'm told that he didn't have a lot of education, but he had all this wisdom. You find some older people who haven't been to anybody's school, anybody's college, but they have knowledge and wisdom that surpasses all understanding. They can tell you that thing that you're getting ready to do, I've been there, I've done that. You don't need to do that. Amen. So there are three types of trials. I'm using trials and tribulations together. So the first one I just want to uh, lift up here. Anybody in here have some money problems? working in negative numbers in your bank account right now? You don't have to raise your hand. Oh, they don't raise their hands. <laughs> Anybody in here just trying to rob from Peter to pay Paul? <laughs> yeah, I went to Walmart yesterday, and I buy eggs. I buy eggs by the dozen. I don't eat them all at one time, but, you know, I, I, I buy five dozen eggs at a time. $17. That's a lot of money for some. I couldn't believe it. Seventeen dollars for some eggs, because I bought so many. I bought five dozen of them. But sooner or later, I mean, you you're gonna have some money problems. Sooner or later, you have to wait for God to wrestle and work those things out. And some of y'all say, I ain't got no money problems. I got credit card problems. <laughs> I got credit card problems. The balance on there is going up $200 a month. That's what it's going to I looked at it and said, I'm just not going to be able to do anything with this. So you're going to have some financial trials in your life, and you won't be able to pay for things. I mean, that, that you can rest assured if you keep living, you're going to have a problem with your money sooner or later. But God can work that thing out. God can work that thing out. And then you have these trials. You have these issues where where you have problems with your health. And you don't have to raise your hand at this, but all of us have some type of physical ailment that, that has given us a problem. Either it's arthritis, 
either it's a problem with your thinking, could be mental, it, it could, we all have some type of physical problem, some type of issue that we're wrestling with. I went to the doctor one time and she read down, she went over this, this long laundry list. And it was a long list, because of what I was going at the time, it was stress, it was poor diet, it was lack of exercise. I know none of y'all have ever had these problems before, but I'm just saying. And they, she read down this long list and said, you got to change. Changing is hard, but if you're a Christian, you're going to have to be able to change your thinking, change your way of doing things, change your habits. You, know, you will have some physical trials that you will have to, 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 to endure. Now, we know that Job, of course, he had his trials. The woman at the well, she had her trials. We had the man who was at the pool of Bethesda. He had his trials. If you were in the flesh, things will go wrong with your body. But I serve a God who can heal my body and make things right again. And then, and then this other trial, and this is something, we, we in Black History Month, so I just got to share this thing here now. In terms of education, African-American education is always on trial. They're always doing something to prevent us from getting our education. There's always somebody saying that, you know, we don't want you to learn this and we don't want you to learn that. It's always somebody trying to withhold, even, I know uh, uh, Brother Jerry talked about, and I'm just piggybacking on what you said in terms of slavery. We don't want the slaves to read. We don't want y'all to be able to write. If you can read and you can write, then you can think for yourself. We don't want you to be able to read and we don't want you to be able to write. My brothers and sisters, get as much education as you can Somebody spent some time at the bottom of a boat. Somebody spent some time facing a bullet. And somebody got a beat down with a baton so you could get an education. Get as much education as you can. You say, well, I don't need an education. You know, man, you don't have to go to college. I'll be the first one to say, you don't have to go to college. But college is good. <laughs> College is good, and if you can't make it to college, you say it's too expensive, get a certification. Become a certified accountant. Become a certified electrician, carpenter, masonry, something. Get something that so you can be able to take care of yourself. Now, now I'm, I, I was wrestling with how I should share this now. In 1986, some people say I wasn't even born back then, but I'm just sharing this story. My mother called me on the on the college campus and we talked. And I said, oh, everything's fine, everything's good, you know, no problems, everything's all right, you know what I mean? You know, I said, well, I, you know, I, I, I need a dictionary. I said, well, you know, I'm not, anybody who knows me, reverend Zuna can't spell. I can use Microsoft Word, but I can't spell. So I told my mother I need a dictionary. I'm gonna show you what she sent me. Let me, let me show you. told my mother I need a dictionary in 1986 or so, and this is what she sent me. This is what she sent me. I asked for a dictionary, I asked for, she would let nothing get in the way of me learning. People, they don't know what I've been through. I'm not gonna tell you the whole story, but I'll tell you this. We used to count pennies on the floor so I could have money for lunch. Y'all don't know nothing about that. When I'm little penny rappers, we would count pennies on the floor so I could have, you know, lunch was only seven cents for a thing of milk and 10 cents for chocolate milk. We would count pennies trying so I could go to school and get my education. Don't you tell me that education isn't a good thing. Now, I'm just gonna finish, I'm gonna tie this thing up right here. We know about, or well, many of us, we know about Governor DeSantis down there in Florida. Anybody know? Okay, we got the governor down there in Florida, governor down there in Florida. He's trying to, you know, we don't want African-American history. We don't want African-American studies. So I did a little bit of homework, and I wanted to find out, well, what can you take in terms of AP classes? You can take AP US history. You can take AP Russian history. You can take AP Chinese language and culture. 
You can take AP Japanese language and culture. You can take European language and culture. But you can't take African American studies because you're going too far. You have all these AP classes that you can take, but we don't want you to learn anything about your culture and your background and what you've been through. We might offend somebody if we share that information. But I don't need AP American, African American studies to learn about my people. You can go on, you can get a book. You can go on the internet. You can read on your own. I went to a little school over here. I'm not even gonna mention the name, but I went to a school and didn't learn just about anything in African American history. It was a suburban school. My introduction to African American studies and African American history happened when I was a substitute in the Trenton Public Schools and they had books everywhere geared towards black folks. And I was able to sit down and read during my prep and find out about all the things that had done and how we achieved and how we were successful in spite of those things but I didn't get it in my high school. I had to get it in an African-American high school where they were sharing that information with us. So, you know, education, African-American education, it is always on trial. It is always being contested. It is always to the point where they don't want you to learn anything. They don't want you to learn anything. But when we talk about this, this thing about these trials, my Bible tells me that Jesus had a trial. My Bible tells me that Jesus was tempted, had, had to deal with some temptation. Take this stone and turn it into bread. That's temptation. See all this that you have here? All uh, look out among the land? I'll give it to you. You know, Satan is good for giving you something that he don't even own. Some people are trying to give you something that's not even theirs. They're trying to beguile you and fool you to, into to getting something that they, they're just trying to trick you. They call him the tempter the deceiver, the one who's always trying to get you off track. And then you always, you, know, you think about the things that you need most or the things that you want most or that little thing that you struggle with the most. That's what Satan will put in front of you. I don't know what your struggle is. By now, you ought to think about you got a struggle going on. You got something that you're wrestling with. I don't care if it's something that comes in a glass. I don't care if it's something that you smoke. I don't care if it's something that has to do with physical attraction. God knows how when you finish with this sin, I mean, I'm sorry, Satan knows how when you finish with this sin to put some new sin in front of you. You may say, I'm not going back and doing that anymore. And then Satan will all of a sudden let something else walk in front of you to get your attention. Amen, somebody. All of us, we have something that we're wrestling with. But even Jesus was tempted and had a trial. And during his trial, they went and they trumped up these false charges against him. You know what? It's bad when people lie on you. Anybody have somebody lie on you? Make up something about you? Spread some falsehoods about you? Even Jesus had people to lie on him. They charged him with sedition and lying and blasphemy and saying, you were the, saying he was the son of God. But my Savior was the Son of God. And you know what? He got up on a third day and proved he was the Son of God. And he's still sitting on the right hand of the Father. If you believe in God and you believe in Jesus, you ought to know that you're going to face some trials, temptations, and tribulations.